Hey guys, welcome to week six of You Got What It Takes. Man, I can't believe that we're already kind of coming to a conclusion of this sermon series. And again, just wanted to say one more time, thank you for letting me be a part of your group and thank you for being a part of this series. Today, um, we're gonna be talking about um, you have what it takes to get through this. And the truth is, um, if you live in this world, this world of brokenness, this world of sin, um, you're going to suffer. And so today we are gonna be talking a little bit in your group about something that we don't typically enjoy talking about and, and that is how we get through suffering. And I think that as a church, it's really important for us to understand that um, even in times that we are walking through blessing, there are people around us that are walking through suffering. So as the icebreaker question, I wanted you guys to kind of be open with your group, share a little bit more uh, for real. What is the, the most enjoyable, the, the most blessed, the most fun time in your life? Um, it could be something in the distant past. It could be what you're walking through right now. But talk a little bit about the, the, the happiest, most blessed time of your life. But also be real with your group and say, hey, Hey, um, was there a time in your life where you suffered, where you hurt, and where you walked through pain? So that just a couple moments, just to kind of break the ice and talk about your most joyful time and the time of deepest and darkest suffering, and I'll see you in just a bit. Hey guys, I hope there was some great discussion with that icebreaker question. Um, kind of asking you to, to get about as real as we possibly can um, with uh, joys and with some of the hurts. And, and I know probably some powerful moments were shared um, in your group. The scripture we're looking at today is an incredible story. They've been pretty incredible every week, but this is a uh, one of those stories that, again, if you grew up in Sunday school, uh, it's one that you know very, very well. Um, it's about someone that Jesus touched and radically changed their life. Um, through his presence. And it's found, if you want to go ahead and, and kind of be considering it, um, in, in the book of John, in chapter 9. And it's a story of, of the man that's born blind. And one of the things I love about this story is, is how it opens up. This story opens up in verse 1 with Jesus passing by this person with the disciples. And the disciples, they asked this question that it was a legitimate question. They said, you know, Jesus, hey, did this guy do something wrong? Or did his family do something wrong that he was born blind? You know, it was very common in Israel for people to believe that suffering, it had to be linked to the fact that someone sinned. I mean, God is a good God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He's a God that gives blessings to the righteous. And so there's this natural assumption that if somebody's hurting, it's because either they did something wrong or someone in their family did something wrong. And, you know, for this guy, he was born blind. So maybe he didn't do the sin. Maybe his family did the sin. So they're asking Jesus about it. And the answer that Jesus gives is so powerful. He says, I tell you the truth, neither this man nor his family did anything wrong. This person was born blind. So the power of God may be manifest through his life. Wow. Like, I don't think about suffering that way. If, if I'm anything uh, like you and you're anything like me, when we're hurting, we want God to just take it away. Like, you know, and, and whether it be minor suffering or major suffering, you know, when, when I get that, you know, that splinter in my finger, God, let's get it out. If I'm walking through that cold or that flu, hey, God, heal me and get rid of this. Like, typically, as Christians, we do face suffering with a somewhat similar theology to the disciples. Hey, we should not suffer because we love God. So when we are suffering, instead of looking for any deeper meaning to it, we typically say, God, just take this away from us. The next questions that you guys are going to be looking at, it's kind of really helping you to examine, hey, um, does God use suffering? And, and can God use um, the suffering that you're walking through or the suffering that your family's walking through or the suffering that your friends are walking through, people that you love? Could God possibly be doing that suffering and allowing that suffering for a purpose? Um, this guy was born blind so that he would have um, a story to tell for Jesus. And as a matter of fact, going even farther than you're going to be able to go in, in your small group, because it's a pretty lengthy story, and I've only given you the first 11 verses. When you look at the end of this story, the way this story finishes is this guy, because he was blind and healed by Jesus, he actually ends up with the highest officials in Israel. He ends up in front of the Sanhedrin. He ends up in front of the most powerful religious teachers in that culture. And they're saying the question, hey, what happened to you? And, and they're trying to find a way to trap Jesus. And they say, hey, we know that this guy's a sinner. You know, you know, bless God, do what's right. Tell us what he did to, to heal you because we know there's no way this person's of God. And, and, and this guy's able to, to stand courageous in front of the Sanhedrin and say, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. All I know is that I was blind and now I see. I mean, like that, that phrase, guys, in, in, in all the verses of the New Testament, it, it resounds out. And we're still talking about this nameless blind guy over 2,000 years later. God used his suffering to bring about something really powerful, and it spread far and wide in the community in Jerusalem. And now that voice still echoes even into our life today. So take a second, look at this guy's story, and then 
you know, kind of consider, does God use suffering? And maybe is God using your suffering to do something in your life that he couldn't do otherwise? Hey guys, I'm sure that was some powerful discussion that you were able to share with each other. And as we go into kind of our our next scriptural point, um, it's kind of with the realization that there are times where we have these these big periods of suffering where there has to be a new normal. And sometimes, as we've been talking about, God can use that new normal to work a powerful work. More often than that, however, God allows us to walk through things, you know, for a brief period of time. Um, And and I kind of like to look at that as, as these are moments where he's kind of put us on the anvil. And any of you who know anything about blacksmithing, especially old style blacksmithing, you know, you take a piece of metal, heat it up really, really hot, and then the blacksmith will hammer on it, and he'll hammer on it until he can change the shape of this thing. And whether that thing that is being crafted is a horseshoe, or whether it's a sword, or whether it's uh, some other implement, in order for the metal to be malleable, it has to go through this intense, you know, period, both of heat and, and of hammering. Um, if the metal could cry under the hands of the blacksmith, it would. I mean, it, it, none of us like to be heated up and none of us like to be hammered on by God, but he allows at times to go through these brief periods of suffering so that we can be made malleable and, and, and be made into this perfect shape that he wants us to fit in. And as, as Peter is talking to the church, and just to give you a little background on First Peter, um, the church that is Peter is speaking to, they are a greatly suffering church. This is a period in the history of the church um, where Emperor Nero has come into power. This guy was completely insane, a total you know sociopath and psychopath by every definition, and he decided to to blame the ills of Rome on Christians. And so this was someone that loved torturing Christians and encouraged the mass persecution and, and the mass murder of Christians. And so the church, they've spread out, they're hiding, they're afraid, they're hurting. And Peter is writing to them, and in this verse that we're, we're kind of looking at more deeply, he says, you know, that, you know, he's praying that God would strengthen them and give them grace, though they've suffered for a little while, and that God would bring them to a time of refreshing after that suffering. And so, um, and the next question you're going to be looking at, um, it, you know, kind of focusing on, hey, what are some things that after we've suffered for a little while, we pray that God returns to us. So again, you could be going through physical suffering, and of course, we hope that physical ability comes back. You know, your family's walked through a period, and maybe you hope that you will return back to the old normal instead of there being a new normal. So take just a second, uh, read this powerful scripture, and even if you want to, guys, um, group leaders, you can go a little bit before and even a little after in the scripture and still get, you know, the even broader context. Um, But we're going to talk a little bit about temporary suffering. How can God use temporary suffering to allow us to be more malleable and used in his hands. Take a little bit, and then we'll finish up in just a bit. Hey guys, for those of you that were a part of this past Sunday, um, as we talk about suffering, um, we were impacted um, by a story uh, from a beautiful young woman that's part of our church named Kiana, who has been walking through some serious suffering. You know, uh, it, it's easy for me to to talk about suffering, and, and for many of you, it's easy to hear about suffering, because the truth is, we haven't ever been hit with like real deal, life-changing Life is never the same type of suffering. But there may be some of you that are watching this that you've had to walk through that level of suffering. And there may be even some of you that right now you are walking through that level of suffering. It, it could be yeah, the, the word cancer, where you know life may never be the same. It could be losing a baby, and life is never going to be the same. It, it could be having that, that mentor, that friend, that mother, that father that you leaned on. They were the rock of your life, and, and God has taken them too young, and life is never going to be the same. And there are a million things I can't even think of where all of a sudden, because of, of something that's happened in our world, yeah, we're suffering, and we're going through one of those major forms of suffering. Um, yeah, that it, suffering can change everything, but I don't ever think that God wastes suffering. One of the things that C.S. Lewis said is that pain is God's megaphone to our life. And, you know, he allows him to speak in a very, very unique and powerful way. So when we're walking through real deal, serious pain, um, it allows us to be changed in ways that we never could be if we didn't go through that pain. The quote that you've been given for your your final question, kind of this this question that's that's closing us out, um, is powerful. I want to read it, you know, perfectly. Everything that God's given us um, is everything that we would ask if we knew everything that God knew. That's a, that's a deep statement. God sees parts of our life that we're never going to be able to see. Um, he knows us in ways that we can't even know ourselves. And so the truth is, God's giving you just the right things 
to make you who he designed you to be. He knows the end picture. He knows things about the context of your life that you can. And so what he has given you, including suffering, is everything that's just right for your life. And so as we go into this final question, um, let's talk about that real pain. Is there anything that you've had to walk through that you wouldn't change? Um, Is there anything that, you know, if you could go back and erase it and start over again and say, you know what, I went through this and in the moment it was terrible. But man, it's made me the man, it's made me the woman, it's made me the person that I am today. Um, to kind of finish you out, being transparent with you about a little bit about my life, um, guys, um, for those of you who don't know, my mom uh, went through more than 10 years of cancer, um, and that cancer eventually took her life. And I can most certainly say that there's there are times where if I had a time machine, I wish I could go back and you know, I'd love to free her from that. But at the same time, there would probably be no Ignite Church without my mom walking through that suffering. There would, there would probably, I probably wouldn't be with my wife and us have the kids that we have if she didn't go through that. Her walking through that shaped me into a man that was able to, to believe that God can do incredible things. Um, and and I, th- I really believe that one of the fruits of her suffering is me being able to, to be with you and be able to pour into all of you. And so I look back at that and I say, you know, even if I could, change my mom's situation, I don't think I would, um, because doing that um, would have affected who she could reach, and it would also affect who I could reach. And so talk about some of those moments in your life, and list some things that even if you could change it, you never would, because God used suffering and hurt to make you who you are today. Guys, thank you for going on this journey with me. I love you, and I cannot wait to hear some of the fruit of your discussion that you're going to have today.